Hello, Sarah. It's great to see you here. Uh, Hello. Thanks very much for being here with us. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It's so exciting to be here. Yeah, exactly. It's it's same for us. It's really so exciting, and our audience are wa were waiting for this moment. So it's great to see you. So um, I briefly introduced you to our audience already, and now. I would like to start with our first questions, uh, if you like. Um, Sarah, we all know that uh, it was a really tough, challenging stuff to take very first image of a black hole. And um, it was M87 star, uh, the black hole in the middle of the M87. Yeah, the, over there, yeah, that, that, that. <laughs> that image that, that one that was amazing and that was an amazing moment for whole humanity so um our first question is actually one of our audience asked this question uh, he asks what did you feel when you have seen the very first image of a black hole what did you feel how was how was it like yeah it's a great question um, so to give a little bit of a story how it went, um, when uh, I first saw it was a year before you saw it. <laughs> um, yeah. And about uh, a couple of months after we got the final data, um, we split our team into four teams that were not allowed to talk to each other for seven weeks. And so for seven weeks, we only worked within our team. and. Um, I think within the first few days, I had already made an image that looks a lot like, like this one. And then I was worried because we decided in our team that we wouldn't talk to each other until our team meeting. Um, so I thought, oh, I got a ring. Oh my gosh, it looks like a black hole. Uh, what is it gonna look like? Did everybody else in my team go get the same thing? And then we met in our team meeting and then everybody got the same thing. And then we wow. went to the next worry what if the other teams <laughs> didn't get the same thing? Yeah. Because we used some newer techniques and there were teams who were using older techniques. We were also worried, you know, what if we're the only team who got a ring? What if only the new techniques got a ring and not the old ones? But then after seven weeks, we met at a workshop in Boston and then we revealed the four images from the four teams and they all looked the same. They all had wow. this ring of the same size, this bright part on the bottom you can see here. And it was so exciting. It was probably the best day of my life. Everybody was so excited and uh, it was so happy. And afterwards, it was such a good time that we, we had a, like a toast uh, with champagne and then we went uh, karaoke and we sang <laughs> fun songs, we sang Bohemian Rhapsody, and we had such a great night. Um, it, it was amazing. We have another uh, supermassive black hole in our galaxy as well. So, um, and probably we already took some data from our uh, black hole, but I'm not sure about that. We will listen to you in a moment. And when we take that data, when we try to take that image, Will we be able to see similar image or it's gonna be somehow different? Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, this is a great question. So the black hole at the center of our galaxy is called Sagittarius A star, and it is different from M87. So M87 is about 6 billion solar masses. It's a huge black hole. It's one of the most massive ones we know that exists in the universe. Sagittarius A star is pretty small. It's only 4 million. So it's only a thousand times less massive, but it's also a thousand times closer to us. So it appears around the same size on the sky as M87. So we expect our telescopes to be able to image it with the same resolution, with the same ability. Um, but we have one more problem, actually two more problems. Because we're looking at it straight through our galaxy instead of you know, up in the sky, yeah. Um, through our galaxy, there is a lot of gas and dust and lots of stuff that can absorb signal and kind of mess it up. And so when we peer through our galaxy, we're actually uh, stopped by dust and gas that um, contaminate our image of Sagittarius A star. We don't have this effect very strongly for M87. So that uh -huh. adds a difficulty that we don't really 
it's much harder to make up features in Sagittarius A star. Also, because it's not as massive as M87, the gas around it moves much faster. So for mm -hmm. M87, um, it, gas moves for a time scale uh, of you know, hours. For a Sagittarius A star, it's minutes. So if you were to compare the two, how we take photos of them, um, mm -hmm. for M87, it's like taking a a long exposure photo of a portrait of a person, of an adult, just sitting there. So they're just sitting there, mm -hmm. you're taking a long exposure, everything's going well, you take your nice photo. For Sagittarius uh -huh. A star, it's trying to take a long exposure of a four-year-old running around. <laughs> <laughs> That's really hard. And you'll find that the best way to do this is with the camera, with a movie, and so that's what we're trying to do with Sagittarius A star because the toddler is moving so much that right. we cannot take a still picture. We have to develop techniques to make movies. This is why it's taking us a very long time because the data is so variable. We have data from the same time that we took M87, um, but it's taking us a long time. But we hope to have something to show you with Sagittarius A star by the end of this year. We still don't know what happens when you enter a black hole, when you pass the limit of the event horizon? So what do you think? There are so many speculations, but we really uh, would like to listen to your answer on this. Do you think that's just a very dense and super massive stellar object? And when you enter that, you will basically get squashed or smashed, or uh, it's just another gate gateway to another universe so what did what is your own ideas uh, on that yeah um that's a good question so of course no one knows <laughs> what is inside yeah, a black exactly. hole no and yeah. there's absolutely no way to know because mm -hmm. of its you know geometry once you go in there's nothing that can escape not even light nothing can travel faster than light so you can never get out um, yeah. But there's interesting things about what happens on the way to a black hole, and it actually changes depending on what black hole. Uh, so if you have a black hole that is about the mass of a star, we call them yeah. stellar mass black holes, uh -huh. because their um, their horizon is very small, you will get spaghettified. Uh, if you yeah. get close, if you get close enough, you get turned into spaghetti. You get stretched out like this, and then you fall in. And obviously you get too stretched out that you become spaghetti and you don't have a conscience anymore to experience anything. Yeah. Um, but if you were to fall into M87, for example, which is a supermassive black hole, billions of mass uh, solar masses, um, because its horizon is so huge, you will actually just gently float in. Nothing, you won't get spaghettified at all. You'll just kind of float uh -huh. in and then look back and see the entire history of the universe, which is pretty nice. It sounds like That's a nice trip. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would you please suggest us a couple of things, suggest our students what they should do if they would like to become a scientist? What would you say on mm -hmm. that? Yeah, great question. So two things I would say. The first thing is don't be afraid to be curious. If you don't know how some things work, just open it up. That's what I used to do. You know, touch all the buttons, try to figure out things. You know, keep being curious. Um, the second thing is take risks because the you know ask people for help, ask for projects, try to get involved. Because the worst thing you can get is a no, and you know that's not so scary. So we'll just go for it. Exactly. Thank you very much. That was amazing. That was amazing.